Donald Trump back in court today. All 12 jurors plus one alternate were selected, but not before a lot of drama when two seated jurors were dismissed. One was let go over privacy concerns, another over a prior arrest, reportedly for tearing down right-leaning political advertisements. Whoops, had that person make it on the jury. And get this, one more potential juror who was not selected from the initial pool just appeared on MSDNC to roast Donald Trump's physical appearance. Wow, you can't make it up, only in New York City. What happened? Why were you dismissed? Because I couldn't be impartial. You couldn't be impartial. So when the judge asked that hand, can you be impartial, you raised your hand and you said you cannot. Exactly. What was your impression of, of Donald Trump when you saw him? Um, you know, he looked less orange, uh, definitely, like more yellows, <laughs> like yellow. Um, nothing else than that. He looks, uh, he doesn't look angry or I think he looks bored, like he wants this to finish and go do his stuff. Let's be very clear. This is a New York City jury pool, summoned from the voter rolls, where nearly 90 percent of all voters picked Joe Biden in 2020. Now, you really think that Donald Trump is able to get a fair and impartial jury in New York City? Look at this headline, quote, CNN analyst says Trump wouldn't be convicted in a a non-blue area case uh, relies on uh, that relies on a known liar, Michael Cohen, quote unquote, from fake news CNN. And let's not forget, the judge is a devout Democrat who donated to Joe Biden. Now, the DA, meanwhile, raised money and campaign on getting Donald Trump, and the charges he filed are totally, completely bogus, misdemeanors, well past the statute of limitations. This entire trial, eight years later, is nothing but a sham. It is all designed not only to smear Donald Trump, but to take him off the campaign trail in the middle of an election and give an open field to every swing state to one guy and one guy only, and that's Joe Biden. Now, Donald Donald Trump has been told he must be in court every day or he will be sent to jail in a city that doesn't even send violent people to jail. And while everyone else in the case is free to say anything they want about the case, Donald Trump has a gag order silencing him. And this week, as President Trump was sitting in court, Biden spent most of his time in the all-important battleground state of Pennsylvania. Although there's a big problem for Joe, the more he campaigns, the better Donald Trump looks, because after three days of hitting the trail, yeah, Joe did not seem to be able or up to the job of being a greeter at Walmart. You know those nice people you meet at the door when you come in and you say, well, where's the sporting goods department or the electronics department? Oh, that's right over there. So right there. Thank you. Nicest people in the world. I don't think Joe could remember where the departments are. Anyway, much less president of the United States. But of course, we are getting a much different story from his campaign. They feel so good about Joe and his cognitive strength and how sharp he is that they put this laughable ad together. You can't make it up from the Biden campaign. Watch. I've been a proud steel worker for 23 years, and I know hard work when I see it. I love to tell the story about meeting President Biden because when you meet him, this guy's as sharp as a knife. They have nothing else to attack because they can't attack the things that he's doing that are so good for this country. I see people going back to work, jobs coming to the area, infrastructure being fixed up. Joe Biden gets things done. Sharp as a knife. Let's see, how's this border policy working out? How's Bidenomics working out? Uh, how's this foreign policy working out with war in Europe and war in the Middle East? And, of course, Joe uh, has basically emboldened terrorists, both the terror group Hamas and the terrorist state uh, Iran. Uh, you sure about that? Anyway, here was Joe Biden today. He was at a Wawa in Philly. I've been to Wawa in Philly, struggling to close a takeout box and then getting quite confused while trying to order a simple milkshake. Poor Joe. Take a look. Thank You're you so much. It's been a pleasure. Mr. President, I'm going to pick up a few pounds here. And don't forget, we also included drinks for you as well. Just Excellent. to enjoy. Excellent. We can take that one. You take that box? Yeah. I'm gonna go order a okay. milkshake. Yeah.
right, I'm just going to order a milkshake. Yeah, we'll be right back. I thought you did it right there. And it gets far worse. Here's Joe trying his best to give a rousing speech to a tiny crowd in Philly. Take a look. The idea was we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men and women are created equal in the image of God, deserve to be treated equally throughout their lives. By the way, all the stuff we've done so far, we've done it, and guess what? We've cut the budget by a lot of money, $172 billion so far. I see a future of the planet. We saved the planet, as this guy's busting his neck doing from the climate change, literally, climate crisis in, in America. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. Mumbling, bumbling, stumbling, a lot of times not making sense. Can you decipher every word he's saying? Well, at least, and I've got to give him credit, he didn't tell the Uncle Bozy cannibalism story again. In case you missed it, well, yesterday Biden told the world that his uncle was eaten by Pacific Islanders, bones and all. Take a look. And my uncle, they called him Ambrose uh, Bozy, they called him Bozy, my uncle Bozy. He's a hell of an athlete, they tell me, when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals, for real, in that part of New Guinea. Yeah, for real. Well, turns out for real, Biden's uncle did tragically die after his plane's engines failed, but he wasn't eaten by cannibals. He drowned in the Pacific. There's no reason to lie and make up a story, but Joe simply cannot help himself. Now, with his mind clearly deteriorating at a, well, accelerated rate, his own tall tales are among the only things he's able to talk about extemporaneously. Everything else requires a note card, a teleprompter, a large font, and lots and lots of guidance from his staff, like when to pause. It says pause, when to say, say hello, when to say goodbye, where to sit, what type of ice cream he will get if he's a good little president. Biden is a lot of things at this point in his life, but sharp as a knife isn't exactly one of them. In fact, Joe has never been regarded as sharp as a knife his entire career. Serial plagiar plagiarizer who cheated in law school still finished near the bottom of his class. A short time later, he became a very mediocre senator from Delaware who made friends with, let's see, a former Klansman, towed the party line no matter what, even if that meant working with segregationists to stop the integration of public schools or at least slow it down. He didn't want public schools, in his words, to be become racial jungles, and now he's an empty suit wearing maximum stability sneakers uh, who, you know, who does what basically whatever his radical staff is telling him to do. They tell him what to read, what to say, where to go, where to stand, where to sit, and when to walk away from the press, which is always. And this is why Donald Trump sitting in a courtroom, as unfair as that is, well, Biden, you know, can't win on his own. He needs all the help he can get, even if that does mean burning down America's system of justice in the process. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.